at infantry to defend Saudi Arabia, and currently fears in the Baltics. The javelin is so effective that who the United States sells or gives javelins to has become a political issue on more than one occasion. Within the US military, the javelin also looks set to transition from being purely an infantry system to being mounted on vehicles. The javelin doesn't look as sleek and deadly as its name would have you think, it resembles a clunky dumbbell slightly over 1 meter in length. Fortunately, you don't need good looks to blow up a tank. The Javelin's Command Launch Unit CLU has a sophisticated infrared sensor with multiple viewing modes, including 4x optical zoom, a 4x greenlit thermal view, and a 12x narrow vision zoom activated for targeting. The Seeker in the missile even provides a fourth 9x thermal viewing mode. The CLU can therefore serve as a handy scanning device for the infantry. The thermal viewers on the Javelin needs to be cooled off to function well, which theoretically takes 30 seconds, but might take a bit longer if you're in Baghdad and it's a breezy 120 degrees at noon. The system also incorporates multiple safeguards to avert or abort accidental launch. The CLU, when loaded with a missile, weighs in at 50 pounds, most of the weight comes from the missile, and can be fired from a crouch or even seated position. That's a lot lighter than the wire guided tow or other long-range missiles that typically required a heavy tripod. Still, it's not exactly something you'd want to run a marathon with. Once the fire acquires a target, locks the infrared seeker onto it and pulls the trigger, the Javelin missile is ejected out of the CLU without using its rocket motor in the soft launch creating relatively little backblast. Missile launch backblast not only makes it easy for opposing forces to spot the launcher after firing, but can make launching while inside a confined space, a building, a deadly risk. So the Javelin small backblast is very handy for keeping the operator alive. Still, the launch does blow back some gas, so you don't want to stand directly behind it. Afterwards, the Javelin's gunner must. Actually, the gunner could play Candy Crush on their cell phone if they wanted to, because unlike most long-range anti-tank missiles, the Javelin is a fire-and-forget system and requires no further input after lunch. The Javelin crew is free to duck into cover and concealment, rather than being forced to remain fixed in place guiding the missile towards the target, as is necessary with semi-automatic command line-of-sight systems such as the wire-guided tow or laser-guided AT-14 Cornet. Russia is also aware of the Javelin's capabilities, and their latest tanks feature several countermeasures intended to defeat them. New Ray Light and Mechaniterra systems feature dual layers of radar-triggered aeroplates designed to defeat tandem charge warheads, the Shtora and the newer Afghan active protection systems can also deploy soft-kill multispectral grenades and flares designed to obscure the tank from infrared seekers or divert them to other heat sources. However, the latest infrared sensors have also improved in their ability to see through obscuring haze and distinguish flares from the original target. And hard-kill active defenses designed to shoot incoming missiles down would need to be able to shoot vertically above the tank to tackle a top attack javelin, which the new Afghanit system on the T-14 tank with launch tubes nestled at a horizontal angle under the turret, doesn't seem capable of doing. The Javelin was designed in the 70s and 80s, when the leaders of the US military had nightmares about being overrun by endless hordes of Soviet tanks, a fear worsened by the generally poor performance of the M47 Dragon missile in use at the time. However, the Javelin finally entered service with the US military in 1996 after the Cold War had ended, and first saw action in 2003 during the US invasion of Iraq. At the time, the United States was not able to deploy troops in northern Iraq by land, so it instead airdropped special forces and paratroopers that fought alongside Kurdish Peshmerga fighters. In the Battle of Debeka Pass, a force of a few dozen special forces operators and a larger Peshmerga contingent engaged and destroyed an Iraqi mechanized company of over a hundred soldiers. The US force had just four Javelin launch units. Nineteen Javelin's missiles were fired, seventeen of which hit, destroying two T-55 tanks, eight mount-pound armored personnel carriers, and several trucks. Reportedly, all of the Javelin shots were made at 2,200 meters range or further, close to or exceeding the official maximum range of the weapon, and one hit was even reported at 4,200 meters. Javelins knocked out several more tanks during the Iraq War, including Type 69 tanks and Lion of Babylon T-72s, none of them cutting-edge types. As the conventional phase of the conflict ended, the Javelin's main duty soon came to sniping smaller, softer targets. The Javelin's precise targeting scope was ideal for spotting and taking out at long ranges insurgent heavy weapons teams armed with machine guns, missiles, or recoilless rifles, as well as the occasional pickup truck. Other weapons systems available to the infantry lack the combination of long range and precision. 
The irony of using javelins to destroy pickup trucks and machine guns is that the roughly $80,000 javelin missiles cost considerably more than the weapon systems they are destroying. This has reportedly has led US forces to at times hold back on using the weapon in Afghanistan. Though considered a lighter weapon than the vehicle-mounted tow missile, significantly larger numbers of tow missiles have been expended since 2003. The Javelin has undergone quite a few upgrades since initial deployment in 1996, let's take a look at three of the most important ones. Given that the Javelin has been used primarily to hit soft targets and structures, a new version of the Javelin warhead with a deadlier blast fragmentation has been introduced, designated the FGM-148F. This new warhead is supposedly just as effective against